Buying used computer parts can be kind of scary. First, you have to look through hundreds of possible parts. Find the one that you want at the price that works for you, then you need to talk to the seller, pay them, and then hope a UPS driver doesn't pile drive your package. And then you finally get your part and pray that it works. It's a lot, but there are steps that you can take to make this process 10 times easier. So let's get into it. First, let's go over what parts you should never buy used. Number one, the power supply. This is pretty simple. If it can possibly burn down your house, buy a new one. It's not worth it. They aren't even that expensive. The second thing is, don't buy any storage. Anything ranging from hard drives to SSDs. They can hold malware that can either track or harm your computer. Also, the longer you use this storage, the more susceptible it is to eventually fail. So you could essentially just be buying a paperweight. In the year 2022, I would say just buy an SSD. They're so much cheaper than they used to be, and they're faster and more reliable than almost every single hard drive. The third and final thing is a case. Yes, a case doesn't make a substantial difference in the performance of your computer, but a picture can't show if they've been smoking a pack a day next to their computer. The dust alone is disgusting, and there's no need to find any other surprises. Just don't do it. With that out of the way, we can go through the step-by-step -step process that you should follow when buying all used computer parts. Choosing where to buy from is actually really important. The best places are OfferUp, Facebook Marketplace, Macari, eBay, and countless others. With any of these choices, we would always recommend, if there's an option to have it shipped, just do it. You have no idea who you're making a deal with on the internet, and the extra few dollars for shipping will be worth it. With that being said, you need to look at the sellers themselves. The main thing to look for are how many sales they have and what their reviews are. Even if they have good ratings, if they have less than 50 sales, I would try to find another seller just to be extra safe. Once you have found a seller, you should take a look at the condition of whatever you're trying to buy. Take a good look at all the pictures they have listed. Don't be afraid to ask for more. If the seller's not willing to send you more pictures, they're most likely trying to hide some damage and you should look for another seller. Also, on the listing, if there's stock pictures that you'd find on places like Newegg or Best Buy, you should also try to find another seller. Most of the time, these are complete scams. You can always ask for more pictures, but the majority of the time the seller will either ignore you or just refuse altogether. If everything checks out with its condition, you can move along to the next step, which is looking for a competitively priced alternative. Trying to look through all of these listings will take a decent amount of time, but buying the first thing you see would be a massive mistake. Places like eBay have thousands of listings, so the odds that the first one you see is the best one is very slim. This will involve looking at a bunch of different sellers and a bunch of different products. What we mean by different products is you might find a slightly better product for almost the same price. For example, if you find a 3060 Ti for a certain price, but then you find a 3070 for only around $75 more, you need to decide if it's worth spending that extra money for the upgrade. For all you know, you can talk that person with the 3070 down 50 bucks, and now it's almost the same exact price for a better card. When looking for used parts, there are two small things that you should be thinking about. The first thing is the return policy. If there is none, that could lead to trouble if you're trying to buy a part that isn't working straight out of the box. It may be hard to get your money back without this return policy. Most marketplaces do have their own method to protect the buyer, but that should not be something that you're relying on. The second small thing that you should consider is the resale value of that item. There's always a chance that at some point you're going to want to upgrade further. In a case like this, you'd want for that thing you bought to have held some value. You can then use that money and put it towards your new part. With all that being said about buying singular parts, you could just buy a whole computer. It would suggest that you replace the parts we referred to in the beginning, but parts like the CPU, motherboard, RAM, and the GPU can all be bought at one time. If you're lucky, you can find a deal with those four parts being worth more than the whole cost of the computer. To find one of these in the current market is pretty tough though. As more and more parts are put on the market, these deals will come along a lot more, and you could save a significant amount of money if you look hard enough. Building your own computer is part of the joy in PC gaming, but don't let a good deal go to waste. Buying any used part online is a journey to say the least. But if you follow some of the steps that we've gone over throughout this video, you'll get a good idea and you'll be very happy with your purchase. There's one last thing that you should always follow. Never, ever buy a used keyboard, mouse, or headset. You have no idea what type of gamer gunk is on that mouse and keyboard, and I would bet money you'll get lice if you put that headset on your head. Please subscribe. We took a deep dive into Intel's new GPUs. Click the link to hear what we found. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing for future content.